I'm Janet Carroll Ryan, and it's my joy and privilege today to weave together some of the components of our service. Reverend Carroll is healing and restoring wholeness. She sends her love and greetings. She misses us, and she will be returning to the pulpit on the first Sunday in September. So, meanwhile, several of us are here serving in some of the elements that she normally does, and she also wants to express her gratitude to those of us who are doing a little extra in her absence. So, for now, I want to welcome anyone who may be here for the first time. We are so glad that you're here, that you've chosen to spend this Sunday morning with us. And we have greeters, welcome people here. Um, so if you'd like to receive a packet of information about the community and the opportunity to receive a little gift from us, would you raise your hand and let us know that you're here? Welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Well, welcome everybody. Long timers, newcomers, um, returnees, we're glad that you're here. And every week we have the beauty of an altar that is created specifically around the theme. And this week, in recognition of our August theme, which is love, compassion, and kindness, and our topic today, which is the spiritual heart, Marsha Dawson has created this amazing, beautiful altar. And we can see symbols of love and compassion and some activity of the greenery there. Uh, <laughs> and as I was, as she was creating the altar, I spoke with her a bit and I said, so tell me something that you're holding in your heart as you're creating this. And she said, well, you know, we're talking about the eclipse and totality. She's really been thinking about that concept of totality. What does that mean? And then we had a spark of recognition of what if we were living in the totality of our spiritual heart? So just enjoy the beauty and the reflection of your totality today. We are indeed living a year of spiritual values. And as I mentioned, August's theme is love, compassion, and kindness. And I really couldn't think of a better representative of this theme than my very esteemed and dear mentor, Reverend David MacArthur. Um, I am responsible for inviting him here today, and thankfully Reverend Carroll was in full alignment with that. And this is really a fulfillment of one of my heart's um, desires, is to share this treasure with my beloved community. I've known Reverend David since 1997, when I bravely and a bit fearfully followed the call of my heart to learn the practices of the Heart Math Institute, and he was my trainer. And I have known him ever since and have also known him in his capacity as the senior minister at Unity Walnut Creek, which is a position he served for 14 years and has recently uh, stepped into what's known as retirement. But we know it's a whole new chapter for his life. He was also honored in 2012 as one of the heroes of forgiveness with the Worldwide Forgiveness Alliance. Reverend David's passion for understanding human transformation has taken him on a powerful path into the discovery of the spiritual heart. Experiences of tragic loss, healing, forgiveness, and his service as an attorney led him to spiritual study and then to more than 35 years of unity ministry. Seeking the scientific principles of transformation drew him to seven years of service on the staff at the HeartMath Institute, and there he discovered that personal transformation is possible within a moment through the spiritual heart. Reverend David is a spiritual leader, teacher, and author, and in my opinion, he is a living embodiment of the spiritual heart, which is his subject today. Let's welcome him. Oh, 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So let's, let's begin with the, uh, probably the best way to begin anything. And that's to take a moment of prayer and meditation together. That will be okay with everyone? So I invite you to uh, turn within, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down here so I can do that easily too. If you would, just bring your attention to the area around your heart. Perhaps touch your heart. And gently pretend that that flow of breath moves in and out through your heart. And as we bring our attention to the physical heart, miraculous instrument that it is, we open to that greater connection with our spiritual hearts. That amazing presence within our own beings of this divine love. Mother, Father, God, You now open us to know your love. For we remember how many times your love has filled us as we've connected with dear ones. as we've watched the beauty of dolphins in the ocean, children laughing on a playground, a friend, take our hand. As we felt the touch of someone enfolding us in prayer. We know your love. Here and now, filling us, blessing us, healing us. lifting us to your peace. And in that peace, we rest in stillness. Beloved Presence, we are so grateful that we can experience your filling us with your love, filling us to overflowing. And we take that flow of divine love now and for a moment we send it to each one who is dear to us. We know it unfolds and blesses 
each of these wonderful beings and lifts them to their wholeness. This love flows through our hearts to this spiritual community. For it blesses and lifts each one, calling forth the very highest within them. This love flows from our spiritual community now out across the world bringing peace bringing understanding filling hearts with compassion and healing that which no longer serves us. We send this love about the earth that it might touch the heart of every single person in the earth. For beloved presence, you are that love in every heart. And in this love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Feeling that love knowing that divine presence as pure, radiant love. Once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And it is so. Here, now, in the presence of that infinite love that is each being. Amen. As I sit here, I find myself connected with a very beautiful moment in place. Uh, as Jen shared, I had the opportunity to uh, let go of church ministry because I had too many other things to do. <laughs> and, uh, if, you know, when you hit that time in life where we need to make adjustments, uh, how wonderful it is to take and step into renewal and connection for a moment. So my wife and I found ourselves on a plane to a little cabin on a lake in Maine. And it was an exquisite, beautiful place. Uh, you could see there were no other cabins around. You could look out on this gorgeous lake and we literally got to watch the leaves turn just uh, exquisite and that nurturing of nature was so very meaningful for us but there's we were on that lake at that cabin because of another nurturing a spiritual support that is 
when we connect into consciousness. You see, that cabin was owned by Ernest Holmes and was his private retreat. And what a blessing uh, to connect in and be supported with that beautiful consciousness that was there. Uh, so, makes my heart sing. <laughs> I want to share an experience with you. This, uh, I was delighted to, to learn this experience. It was uh, a, a moment uh, that my son had. My son's name is Peter, and he and his wife, Julia, live in L.A. And Julia had just been offered a job. Now, what Julia knew about this job was that it was very demanding and stepping into a position that was understaffed and, you know, extremely challenging and the money would sure help out. And she was trying to figure out what, what to do about that. And the more she thought about it, the more she began, found herself worrying and triggering anxiety experiences that had been a part of her past, part of uh, challenges that she dealt with when things were tense and stressful. And my, my son Peter was there and he wanted to, to help his wife. Here she is and you know she's, she's upset, she's worried. And he had this, this special uh, knowledge the special knowledge that you and I share of, you know, he absolutely knew what you could do to stop this experience of stress, of worry, of anxiety that takes place within it, how to stop it within moments, uh, and how then to access another entire level of wisdom that exists within us. And he knew that because we'd, we had... Uh, uh, both been trained by uh, the Institute of Heart Math, as uh, Carol Janet Ryan has. Our, you know, we share this beautiful, beautiful knowledge. But Peter had another piece of knowledge there, so he knew that if uh, Julia would follow these steps, she she could literally transform her body, transform the anxiety, be at peace, and get very clear direction on what to do. Only he had done that with her once before when she was upset. <laughs> and he had come to understand that there are times when you can be in the role of trainer and there's other times when you need to be in the role of husband. And those don't necessarily mix. So he, he had this marvelous knowledge, this way to really help, get the real answers, and he couldn't use it. So he's sitting there while someone that he loves so much is at a real point of worry and stress and anxiety. Now, let me, let me ask, have you found that in your families? <laughs> you know, they're going through their thing and you, you know how to help them. Or in you, you've been watching these friends or coworkers, whoever they are, grow up and make their, make their decisions. <laughs> You got a pretty good overview. You understand what's going on. And you can't do a thing about it. Ends up kind of feeling powerless, don't we? And I, you know, I think of this, which we're talking about decision making and stress and anxiety there, but that same feeling comes up when somebody's in that painful place of severe illness or maybe financial crisis and we aren't able to help them. That powerless feeling that we get and the frustration as you love and care for people. You know, one of the values that, we're, that you're focused on here is care. And the struggle because we do care and we're powerless to help now as Peter was going through those feelings what he suddenly recognized was 
he was also stressed and frustrated. And, and, and now he couldn't do anything for Julia, but he could for him. Because <laughs> uh, the same things that he was going to help her with actually worked for him. So he, so he, he started first, he just touched his heart and pretended to, that breath through the heart, bring the attention down to the heart. Do that with me for a moment. Just touch your heart and pretend to just breathe through it. Notice how you can just focus your attention. It's almost as though you could sense a movement of energy there as we withdraw our energy from a process of the brain. That's what's making us worry, our brilliant brains. Uh, tap right into all our emotional insecurities very effectively. And so we draw our attention down to the heart. And then the next, next thing that Peter did was to engage his spiritual self. Now to do that, we have to connect with our hearts. We have to act, there's an, actually an access code that turns on the heart, its power, its intelligence. So he took that step, focused on that experience of making this shift within his being. And when he did that, suddenly he felt different. He felt peaceful. He felt connected. Now one of the reasons that I'm sharing with you is at the... At, at the core of what draws us here is the desire for spiritual connection for that to become effective and constant and meaningful in our lives and if you, you remember that anxiety powerless thing that is a symptom called non-connection you don't feel connected now it's not that Spirit isn't everywhere present and here animating our bodies. But the consciousness of that divine is not directing our awareness. And when Peter activated the heart, that connection took place. And then he had access to the wisdom of his spiritual heart. You see this, we, we exist so often in this experience of the body and the brain, and yet there's an entire part of our being, the real part of our being, that's going to be around before and after all that stuff is doing its thing. And it is connected with infinite wisdom. And so from there he could ask that wisdom, how do I respond to this situation? And one of the wonderful things about the depth of connection we can make through the heart is that we're able to call that wisdom, that spiritual intelligence, the wisdom of the spiritual heart. We're able to call it into conscious awareness so that we get answers, real helpful answers. And his answer was right there and it was very clear. It was, ask her if you can hold her. And so he did. He said to Julia, would, would you like for me to hold you? And she stopped for a moment and said, yes. And so he was able to put his arms around her. And he could feel that change as the tension began to release. And after a while, as she was peaceful, she said, thank you for not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> he, got the, he got that part in the direction too. I mean, it's like it was, 
Okay. <laughs> one, one of the things that, that I love about our working into spiritual maturation is that we begin to embrace the very practical, real, everyday impact of the power and wisdom of our spiritual selves. And what I just shared with you is not different than something we've all gone through with family, with friends, with loved ones, with situations in our lives. Let me, let me just check for a moment. Now, how many of you meditate? Okay, and how many of you have a prayer life? Okay, so I was going to say, well, think back a week. But knowing this now, I'm going to say, think back two weeks. Um, to when you found yourself in a situation that was, where there was tension. You know, where you were worried about something, where you were feeling powerless or angry or one of those things that comes up, that turmoil that happens within us. You know, the conversation that wouldn't quit in your head. May have even done it in the middle of the night. Okay, that, yeah, just to kind of remember that. Remember that feeling. That feeling is the f divine feedback that says, you're not connected with me. Okay. And what we also know, because of the, the gift of what science can tells a, tell us right now, is what we are connected with is the dynamic power of our brains to defend us. Okay, they have us in a marvelous uh, neurological and biological loop that uh, gives us hormones that quite effectively make us dumber. Okay, because at that point, our body is not concerned about the correct answer on your taxes. What our body is concerned about is survival. Do I need to attack and fight and be angry and drive away that something that's threatening me? Or do I need to run away? Okay, and that's wonderful, but that may be happening while you're sitting in the seat of your car on the freeway, going nowhere, doing nothing. <laughs> nothing can hurt you because nothing is happening right there that moment. But here we are, disconnected, anxious, frustrated, powerless. We have the power. We've always had the knowledge, but we had general knowledge. And what has changed over a period of time is as we've begun to build on our spiritual knowledge with scientific research, we've been able to move some of our general knowledge into very much more specific and effective ways of that spiritual connection. Now, most scientists is not going to confess to what's happening. They're going to talk about the body. And when they talk about the body, what they're going to say is, wow, your heart has changed your whole body. Your heart is not stressed. It's in this amazingly efficient space. And what it's doing is it's bringing system after system of your body into higher performance. And we can measure, and we know that you're more intelligent. We know that your decisions are better. We can measure all of that. They just can't admit that the reason that's happening is because you are plugged directly into your spiritual self. That's what's causing the change. But I get to know that. <laughs> <laughs> So they kind of look the other way and let me say my thing. But that's what's happened. We know what's going on. We have other ways of doing that. And we have had the great teachings of love and inner transformation. But what we now have is how to do that with maximum efficiency, such that we can literally measure each moment 
whether we're there or not. I had the uh, experience of being, having the assignment within my family of the person who was to drive my uh, teenage children to the bus stop. We were in the Boulder Creek area of uh, the Santa Cruz Mountains and we had this wonderful ride down little one lane roads until we got to the bus stop. And that and Peter at that time was a freshman in high school. My daughter Anna was in middle school. And so we, we discovered that we had this affirmation that we used every morning. Hurry up or you'll miss the bus. <laughs> you know how affirmations work. <laughs> sure enough, there's a morning we show up after everybody, we knew we were late. We were, you know, hurry up, get that, where's your shoes, where's the homework. We get in there, tear down through the little road, we get there and the bus has gone. And in the Santa Cruz Mountains, you don't follow a bus and catch up. That's not the way it works. And so suddenly we're, we're there and I have these kids that have, you know, not gotten ready like they were asked to and we're late and I can't take them to school because I, I have to get to work, which is, begins in a few minutes and I have meetings uh, scheduled. And I think, well, maybe they should walk to school. <laughs> of course, it's eight miles. And yet, right at that time, that was feeling kind of good, uh, you know, that teachable moment. And then I thought, oh, maybe I ought to check my heart. <laughs> Just one of those things when you find yourself with that edge to yourself, that kind of says, whoop, not connected. <laughs> I thought, well, let me check. So I touch my heart, pretend to breathe through the heart, bringing my attention here. And then that second step, the step of connection. And it's this that I really want to share with you today because I want you to walk out of here knowing whenever you need it, you can connect with the power and the wisdom of your own spiritual self. In a moment. Now I loved running away to that cabin. Ten days. Ooh. But generally, when things are going down in my life, I don't get ten days. I don't often get ten minutes. So I like to know how to make that connection. So again, touch my heart. Pretend to breathe through the heart. And then activate the spiritual heart. The access code is a set of feelings, not thoughts. I love new thought. They called it new thought because a hundred years ago, they had not even begun to explore the feeling world. They didn't have the language that we've been able to add to the understanding of the unfoldment of consciousness that this movement is about. There's something that happens when we touch any of those feelings that activate our heart. Your heart feels full. Okay, can you remember moments when your heart was full? Well, this is one of the cleanest, clearest, most powerful ways to turn on that connection is to remember a moment when your heart was full. Remember and enter into that feeling. Okay, think of it now. When, when was a moment that your heart was full? Many different kinds, aren't there? Let's, let's, let's take him for a moment. Connecting Share. With my son and his puppies. Connecting with your son and his puppies. Oh, puppies are good. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. Somebody else. M moment when your heart was full. Okay, yes, family all there. Wow, yes. 
Your daughter's birth. Wow, yes. Right now. Say again. Right now. Right now, yes. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> okay. Remember, remember now as you, as you hear those, those sharings, could you sense the feeling that was there? Okay, you have memories of moments when your heart was full and some, you know, like puppies and children. And the beautiful moments of families together and the exquisite experience of, of, of birth, that connection with that new being. There are so many. You've had them. They've been things that we've called spiritual experiences or family. And some were simply sitting out in a lake, watching the leaves turn. Okay. Those, that feeling. Okay. That is what connects you to your spiritual heart. That lifting, know how, when you remember, remember how it lifts you? Feel that lifting? That is literally the experience of your spiritual self expanding in your being. Okay, we've given it invitation to be present. And so when it touches us, it lifts us. That's the experience of the divine within us. It lifts us. And it also guides us. Peter knew what to do. When I did that, sitting in that car on the side of the road, suddenly I found I was looking at the situation completely different. I suddenly realized, I've been so responsible, I always get to work on time. One time late isn't going to make any difference. They can do their meeting without me. I can get there. I'm not, they're not going to be upset. Most of them have children. <laughs> and a strange thing happened. I suddenly had great compassion for my children. Understood they've been through a stressful morning. They had difficult days in front of them. Try going back and being a teenager in school today. Wow. Challenging. They needed to be centered and together. And I was not only at peace with that. It lifted me. So we headed off. I did say to them, okay. I want you to get to, to school, ready to do good, to have your best day. I'm going to put on some music. Will you agree to me that tonight we'll talk about how to do this better? Yeah, they were up for that. And we headed down the road, but I didn't have to go through a mental argument with myself. I should. No, you shouldn't. What about this? You know, when we try to, mon to control the mind with the mind, your heart is 40 to 60 times more powerful than your brain. When you engage that wisdom and that power, it changes you, and it changes you because it is the presence and power of divine love that you are being called forth in your being. Now, we don't have the time to touch the next step that calls us into that wisdom of the spiritual self being called into conscious awareness. But know that it's there. You've had that wisdom. You've experienced that. But you know how to connect right now. You already did it. You remembered that moment when your heart was full. That is the experience of the presence of divine love. Have you ever had someone look you deeply in the eyes and say, I love you with all my head? <laughs> no, it's not that thing. That's not the connector, is it? <laughs> it happens. That divine love is there. It's through your heart. And that feeling to remember and feel. Touch, breathe, remember and feel. And you're connected with an infinite, beautiful wisdom that's only purpose 
is to take you into complete fulfillment in that moment and in your life. You are that loved. Bless you.